Hi, everybody, and thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to go through another niche that we sell quite frequently in my eBay store, and that would be vintage sheet music. The lion's share of the vintage sheet music I have is from around the late 1890s up until the mid-1940s, probably a 50 or so year span. It covers quite a few great artists and great musical movements from ragtime to jazz to uh, kind of the crooner stuff, everything in between, blues, country. I'll also come across songs from movies, from Broadway shows, uh, gospel music, just about anything you can think of. It's out there in the form of vintage sheet music. I thought maybe we could go through just a handful of these pieces so I could kind of give you a high-level overview of what I look for when I'm selling this vintage sheet music. First of all, where do you get vintage sheet music? Well, that's the age-old question, I guess, for a lot of different things. Sourcing is a it's kind of a personal thing, but it's also something that a lot of people openly discuss, depending on what they're sourcing anyway. In the case of vintage sheet music, there's millions of pieces out there. You could find them in estate sales. We found quite a few in, in estate sales. You could pick them up in church sales, too. They can absolutely be found as well in antique malls. You'd also probably be surprised to learn that you could definitely find a nice amount of vintage sheet music within a record area, like in an antique store, if they have a, an area that sells records. Sometimes they're in boxes underneath the records. You just have to dig and peck a little bit, but you'll find them. They're all over the place, and they're typically in pretty decent shape as well. Let's take a quick look at some of the pieces I have up right now listed on my eBay store. This first one represents uh, one of the more popular people in music in general, and certainly in this sheet music category during that time frame from the early 30s all the way up until his passing in uh, 1977. And that would be, of course, Mr. Bing Crosby. This piece in particular is very interesting because it's from back in 1931, which is really kind of the very beginning of Bing's career and popularity. You can see also it says lyric by Harry Tobias and Bing Crosby. The title of this song is At Your Command, and you can see it says Introduced by Bing Crosby. It's from a very popular publisher as well, Robbins Music Corp. You'll see them on tons of pieces. And there's a look at the actual sheet music, at least the first page. You could see, and this is pretty consistent amongst a lot of these pieces, lots of age toning, that kind of brownish quality that the paper has taken on. But that's the notation, and the you can see this one was actually written for ukulele, which is extremely popular back in that time, and piano and vocal. And here's the listing in my eBay store. You can see I'm doing a little coupon action, which we discussed on a previous video on my sheet music in general. But I have this one priced at $38.50. Uh, shipping is first class. It probably should be a little cheaper than that. I'm not sure why we have $5 on there. I'll take a look and make sure I have it priced correctly. These things ship just like my vintage print ads in those same um, cardboard mailers. And I also put them in those clear sheets to keep them protected. You don't really have to get too detailed in the titles for these things. At least I haven't found that I needed to. People are looking typically with, like a lot of other products, they're looking at this cover and thinking that it might be something frameable or something they want to have in their home. Maybe they're just Bing Crosby fans in general. They could be music fans. They could be piano players. It's really not one individual who buys these things. These collectors are just collectors and they enjoy the music and they enjoy the artwork on the covers. Bing Crosby is most definitely one of the biggest stars ever. And as far as sheet music from this period, the 30s and 40s specifically, always great to find anything with Bing Crosby on the cover. You're gonna make some money on those. These next artists, I'm sure everybody can recognize right away, of course, would be the Marx Brothers. Marx Brothers from the film, very legendary film, A Night at the Opera. Marx Brothers stuff also from this period from as far back as the 20s in the case of the Marx Brothers because they did some Broadway shows back in the 20s and teens even uh, long before they were movie stars that made them famous. The Night at the Opera was actually a Broadway show. I think Duck Soup was as well prior to becoming a feature film. There's that Robbins music again at the bottom as far as the publisher, but Groucho Harper and Chico up there. And we also have a few game show fans of the 60s and 70s. You might remember that lady right in the middle. That would be Kitty Carlisle, who used to be on To Tell the Truth um, and many other game shows back in that era. I remember them fondly as a child. So Marx Brothers, another bolo in the world of vintage sheet music. You want to find Marx Brothers stuff, you want to price it correctly, you'll get some good money. Lots of Marx Brothers fans, lots of Marx Brothers collectors out there. Now this piece has a track from an um, MGM film called Operator 13. And the unique thing about this is it's a very early piece with uh, Gary Cooper, legendary movie star Gary Cooper. Robin's music again at the bottom as far as the publisher on this one. And you can see here on my listing, this is from 1934. So it's certainly an early Gary Cooper piece. I think that's what makes this one marketable. 
uh, priced accordingly. Looking forward to selling this one, but this is another. This is a classic case of trying to find movie stars or musicians early in their career, kind of before they exploded in popularity. Definitely something to be on the lookout for and aware of when you're sourcing sheet music. And here's a fine example of an item that sells across many different genres, and that would be wartime editions. What's really intriguing about this one amongst collectors, if you look at the top, there's that little banner in white where it says it's a war edition. Again, it's 1918. It's uh, the very end of World War I. And it says to cooperate with the government and conserve paper during the war, the song is issued in smaller size than usual. It's a classic example of conserving and rations, which took place obviously during World War I and definitely during World War II as well. So in this case, the song itself, the artist, the, the writer, are almost irrelevant. It's really that banner up top saying that there's a smaller form of sheet music, again, because of the war effort. Definitely something to be on the lookout in general is wartime items. They sell very, very well. Now this one really speaks to what I just discussed earlier about trying to find famous people very early on in their career. In this case, we have the legendary vocalist Kate Smith, God Bless America, became iconic during World War II. She was huge in the 30s and 40s, but this example is from way back in 1925. The song is called Lights Out, Close Your Eyes and Dream of Me with Kate Smith. And now finally for this video, here's another legendary songwriter Mr. Irving Berlin famously wrote White Christmas, of course, amongst hundreds of other tunes. He was both a songwriter and he also had, if you look at the bottom of this kind of cool artistic ad from back in 1922, you could see Irving Berlin Inc. Uh, music Publishing. So he had his own publishing company, which you could see in tons of pieces of music. You'll see his name scattered across all sorts of fields for decades and decades. He was an incredibly popular artist very wealthy man and known just as much for his publishing as for his songwriting ability. This is a tune called Crinoline Days from back, like I said, 1922 from the Music Box Review of 2223. Nice image here too. It looks like a music box with like some ballerinas dancing, you know, dreamy looking ballerinas outside of it. This is a great example of a piece that I think people would probably buy just for the artwork alone. And that would definitely be a huge selling point in this one. And that will wrap up today's video. Just a high level overview of vintage sheet music. Let me know, please, if you're interested in perhaps uh, seeing some more videos on this topic. It's something that's very near and dear to my heart personally. I'm a musician. I love music all my life. So this is something I actually really enjoy to find and look for and sell. Please leave a big thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed it. And feel free to leave any questions or comments down below in the comments section. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. This way other people can enjoy it as well on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment and subscribed. We have lots of material on the way, and we're building a pretty decent catalog of material already posted. I really appreciate everybody coming in for a few minutes. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll be back with another one soon. Take care, everybody.